six, he fell in love with car racing. At the age of nine, he became a race car driver professionally. After 350 awards all over the world and more, at the age of 27, he had his very first show at the Paris Fashion Week. With me is renowned couture designer, my dear friend, and I'm very proud to be interviewed, Mr. Mark Bumgarner. Wow. Oh my God, so wait, were you always creative like when you were young? No, super far from it. My whole life growing up was about racing. It was all testosterone. Although my sister was racing with me, yeah. she was always the only girl. Yeah, so but she was into the same thing. Yeah, she was into the same thing. Although I got into it first mm -hmm. and then she followed a few years after. I had no idea or anything about fashion until after I stopped already. It wasn't like I knew I wanted to become a designer when I was a teenager. It wasn't like that at all. I was moving all around all over the world just for racing. Mm -hmm. That was my whole life. And fashion came after I moved back and then I just kept meeting people in the industry here in Manila. And that's how you that's were exposed how I, to it. Yeah, exposed. But did you like ever draw? Do you no, yeah? I learned that after I started. Okay, so when was that shift? Like when you moved here, what was that one moment that you said, okay, I want to do this? I didn't permanently move back yet. I was just coming home for the summer mm -hmm. at that time and what age were you then around 19 wow. 20 <laughs> I didn't move back till about after two or three years yeah. after coming back I usually six months here six months abroad yeah. during off season I'm here and all I would do was you know go out events uh, uh, parties meet new people and everyone I was meeting was in the fashion industry okay. I kind of was super interested in what they were doing mm -hmm. And I started out just helping friends out backstage during their fashion shows. Okay, so what are the similarities, do you think? Because when you're racing, there's like a certain high. With fashion and designing, what's that high that you get from it? I mean, what's the similarities? Well, it's definitely the adrenaline is a lot more like hardcore when it comes to racing. But with the fashion shows, it's kind of similar but you just get them you know every few months yeah. it's not all the time but the work that goes on behind it is mm -hmm. almost the same because it's really all about discipline and hard work okay so i'm going to go back to the people that there are a lot of people that ask they're so fixated with this is the direction they want this is what they're going to be and basically all their lives they've been thinking and developing that certain talent just for this one thing how did you get that like motivation to just shift i mean what was the reaction of your parents and everybody around it, you? It took a while. It, in the beginning, even my family and even my close friends thought it was just a phase. Mm -hmm. It took me a good couple of years to kind of even just convince the people close to me that I was serious about yeah. this. It didn't happen overnight. I really had to prove myself within my inner circle mm -hmm. for the first few years. And it wasn't like I started right away. I was helping out doing like assisting and stuff backstage with mm -hmm. different fashion shows and trying to do apprenticeships so but not really with designers climb. super struggle like because a lot of people have this notion that oh my god you just came out of nowhere and then you became super famous and no it it was super duper long i mean as a real business about three or four years but technically i've been building and laying down the groundwork maybe about eight years ago already what would you like tell people out there that you know are going through the same thing like what would you say a lot of people like when you say fashion industry they always think right away designer yeah there's so many different layers. layers and so many different career paths you can choose with fashion you can be a stylist mm -hmm. you can be a, a fashion designer you can be director you can be a brand manager or a mm -hmm. buyer for high-end yeah. brands and stuff like that there's, there's a lot of so different things, things you can do, can do. but Dita Satin when you say fashion fashion designer they think it's just your how do you call it, old school like Stylist or designer? Yeah, our papa gawa yung friends ng mama and stuff like that. From the beginning, I followed doing the collections, like following the international calendar. Even though I wasn't showing, I would do a collection. Yeah. You don't have to have a fashion show to do a collection. Yeah. You follow the seasons, you prepare all your paperwork, all the back work stuff. A lot of people think it's all about the glamour and yeah. they think it's so fun and easy to make all these things. Yeah. But there's so many layers building and leading up to it mm -hmm. and I think as long as you're ready for the hard work my friends will attest to this that I'm never available I'm here Monday to Saturdays almost sometimes 24 hours my quote is my tinatapos ako yeah. always so say as okay as long as you're in it. for the hard if work if you're in for the hard work and you're not going into it for the glamour then you might be cut out for it yeah. if you're not ready you have to think again and money doesn't get you anywhere okay. it's not about the money
for the kids that are struggling with their parents, of course, you know, parents, they just want the best for you. But how do you, like, organically make it happen uh, well, and for persuade me, it was them? Like, like, for me, it was the same. It took me about a good two years to even convince my parents I was okay for this. Because I didn't say, oh, I want to become a designer, and they gave me capital. No, it's, I had to really do it from scratch mm -hmm. with the sm little savings I had from racing. Because I did have allowance from my boss when I was a racer. When you win races, you get prize money. Yeah. So I had that not much left in my bank account when I moved back, but I did it on my own basically. People think like, oh, he comes from an, a good family, that's why he's there. I did not get any like, here's your Favors money and, and start a business. It wasn't that way. And plus my dad doesn't think that way because he's American. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I worked for my first car, you worked for your first car. It's, it wasn't like all spoon fed, which a lot of people think. But again, it's all about proving yourself. Yeah. And you can only do it yourself. No yeah. one can help you do that. Now when people think, oh, let's become a designer. Yeah. They don't understand how hard it is. It's easy to make clothes and put stuff out. But mm -hmm. it's another thing where it has to be clients that you're family or that you don't know when they start coming in people you don't know start coming in as clients then you can say okay okay we can do this yeah now for those who are 20 somethings what advice would you give 20 somethings that want to just go for it and do that major shift with their career similar to what i said my personalities i'm always like it's all or nothing so mm. if you're willing to take the risks if you're willing to have the sleepless nights and you don't get jealous when all your friends go out or miss mm -hmm. events and stuff like that then you're ready to start anything not just fashion yeah you know there's a lot of different businesses out there and you don't have to specifically have a whole like me mm -hmm. i didn't grow up wanting to be in fashion or knowing fashion even because at the end of the day after all the creative it's you still have to know how to run the business mm -hmm. so i have some friends that they're in fashion now but they come from a business background yeah right? and for those people that are already doing what they're loving like you you love Love what you're doing but it's not always you know fun yeah, and exactly you're also stressed like i see him stress all, oh, all the time i see him broke all the time <laughs> <Super>. <laughs> like it's always a struggle but what would, advice would you give people that are doing what they love but need that motivation or inspiration well, to keep them going i guess the harder it is to get where you are the more fulfilling Riba. i feel that way because i had to do it that way it's like if you don't work hard enough for what you're getting and if it's just given to you, you almost take it for granted. Mm -hmm. But with me, like with social media and all that stuff helping me get my brand out there, it's not about getting there, it's about how long you can stay and how much further you can go. So tell me, who is Mark from Garner in terms of your design and what kind of woman are you dressing up? Like, what kind of woman represents Mark from Garner? You. What? Uh, me. Mark from Garner. <laughs> Marte. Um, Marte. <laughs> Mark from Garner, woman is someone who's very confident, knows what she wants, mm -hmm. you know, and not afraid to take risks also fashion wise. Yeah. Well, me personally, I'm very basic. <laughs> but the Mark from Garner woman is not, you know, it's very out there. You don't come to me wanting to blend in in the yeah. crowd. You come to me. And you know, you want to stand out, but not in the vulgar, you know, very, yeah. it's always modern, classic at the yeah. same time and very clean lines. Yeah, but I don't come to him for that. I come to him for the motivation to look, to come <laughs> out, you know, to, to be okay. It's going to be okay to, you know, spread my wings and look differently because I'm also very, you know, shy and not so... Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> so you did Paris Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. We were there for something major, yeah. which was your show at the Ritz. And yes. That's a huge deal. Super huge deal for the brand. So it was the first time that we brought a whole collection to present. It wasn't a fashion show. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, during Fashion Week and you had all the big runways and mm -hmm. stuff. It was really mainly business. So mm -hmm. it was one-on-ones with different buyers. So it was a by appointment only trunk show at the Ritz. And there were other designers doing it as well from all over the world. And basically, they're buyers from different boutiques yeah. or high-end department stores. it's a big stores. deal because usually Super. when they have Paris Fashion Week, all the big names are there. Yeah. And all these big people go see exactly. trunk shows. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. you have all the who's who in fashion like, but roaming wait, tell around. Me. This isn't the first time that they asked you to do this. No, they've been asking me to do it for about two years. Okay, so why didn't you accept before? One, budget. One? 
that's the main that's thing. That's the reality. And two, I mean, I don't want to do anything if I know I'm not ready. And I was just lucky that they kept asking. Yeah, and the, and the, they waited to say The that, opportunity presented, yeah, waited for you. Also. Yeah, so whenever we were ready, they really just welcomed us. But that was the easy part. Yeah. The hard part was getting everything there and fixing up <laughs> and all that stuff. That was the hard part. Yeah. It, the glamour was on Instagram, but everything yeah. else is not there. Because this is the reality. This is reality. And this is what you want them to know. Exactly. And it's... I mean, for me, technically, when they go to Paris, I'm a no one. So for them to even go to you, for them to even set up an appointment, it says something because they don't know our world here yeah. now. Okay, I just most of the artistas here and who's who here, but there they don't know me. It's like the whole world. It's like back to zero. Yeah, there. you're presenting it's, yourself to the whole world. Exactly. It's the clothes that have to speak yeah. for itself. So that's why I didn't do it right away because I really wanted to wait for the right collection. And until now, I mean, with my team that I've built, we're all learning every day. Yeah. And I don't put out the same thing all the time. And which is so inspiring to a lot of people, to us, especially me, because I see you and how you work. But I want to share to people that formula. Do you have a formula to success? Or no. what is that major like guarantee There's... that, OK, this is how you do it? There's no formula. I mean, of course, all of us designers, what we put out is our best, right? Yeah. For me, when you want to set a tone for the brand, you have to put out something that represents the brand. You have to be consistent. You cannot be like, oh, I'll do this style once and I'll do this style next and kind of jumble around with the collection. Especially that. For me, technically, that's the first time we presented there, mm -hmm. outside of the country, apart from, you know, normal social media stuff that yeah. we do here. I have a question. So a lot of people prepare all their lives. They go to school, they have to prepare for this. Like they go, if they want to be a doctor, you have to... Attend. Did you go to fashion school? I did not go to fashion you school. Go to fashion In school? the beginning. <laughs> I didn't have the luxury to go to fashion school. I did everything like from the nitty gritty yeah. and all that stuff. If I would take back, I wish I went to fashion school because you need fashion school to know the basics. Mm -hmm. But also they don't teach in school all the everyday stuff that you learn when you run the business and when you build a team. So there's pros and cons, but obviously I would suggest to always go to fashion school and go to a, do an apprenticeship after, which I also didn't do because I didn't really... Even if I tried to apply, I didn't have a background. Yeah. Even when I read resumes or review resumes from applicants, I mm -hmm. also really don't get a lot of interns. Yeah. Because I'm kind of, like, I kind of want to keep it to myself. Okay, like, I've so only hired my first design assistant a year ago. So if you just graduated and you want to enter fashion, yeah. what would be the first step? Get an apprenticeship. Get an apprenticeship and expect to work a lot. It's not like, you see the designers always in the events mm -hmm. on social media. When you go to an apprenticeship, that's not what happens on a daily basis. Like, and we don't work normal office hours. We're not here from 8 to 5. Like, yeah. I'm here from 8 to 12, 8 to 3 in the morning, mm -hmm. sometimes until 5 in the morning. It really depends what the deadline is. Mm -hmm. Clients, shows, deadlines for international clients, it's all different. So, like, in also in groups now in WhatsApp, right? So there's a WhatsApp group for local clients, a WhatsApp group for collections, a WhatsApp group for the shoes, a WhatsApp group for the accessories. Mm -hmm. There's a WhatsApp group for the international clients, and, but it's all the same people in yeah. the group. I don't have different departments. I mean, this is run by four people. Yeah. <laughs> this is not like, I don't have an HR. I, don't, I mean, I have a huge team for to do all the clothes, which I still run. I'm yeah. not in my office every day. If there's no clients or no fittings in my shop, yeah, I'm in the work area. Because yeah. I do the draping. I foresee everything that happens from scratch until mm -hmm. it's finished. And I think that's very important because what if I have a client tomorrow, for example, like you have an event tomorrow. Sometimes you do super rush, right? We have an event to today. Mm, yeah. And what, what's gonna happen if I'm in the event, that's right. you know? That's why you ch learn to choose where, where to go. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the work that speaks for itself. If you have a gown that fits like a little ill in an area, they're not going to ask what happened. They're going to say, oh, that's his work. Yeah. They're not going to know the backstory that we only had five hours to that's do it. That's right. You know? yeah. And sometimes even just three. Yeah. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> for Filipino designers that want to make it big abroad globally, that's the big dream. That's the, I mean, that's everyone's that's dream. That's everyone's dream. What advice would you give them? It all goes back to school. In fashion school, 
they'll teach you to do collections. They'll teach you all the back work, like having the line sheets prepared and all that stuff, which a lot of my designers that I, my, are my friends, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. But for me, even when I didn't have clients, I was putting out collections. I was following seasons. Even if I didn't have a, sh have a show, I was making collections. Spring, summer, fall, winter, resort, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It goes on. It's never ending. You can do up to 15 collections a year. But I can't do that because I have a small team. So I only do two major collections and sometimes in-betweens. Mm -hmm. The resort, the bridal, and then are my in-between collections. Yeah. Spring, summer, and fall, winter are my biggest collection. And finally, what is next for Mr. Mark from Garner? What is next? A lot. There's still a lot I want to do. Um, this is just the start. Basically, again, I'm just starting. That back to zero, tayo abroad. Mm -hmm. Here, I, I like where I am. I like how I'm growing here. But I still want to do more here. So I am opening a store in Greenbelt. It's going to be called Bumgarner Studio. So it's ready to wear nice. shoes and bags. So I'm very excited for that. And the goal with that also is to, to have it be global. So we're going to be launching at the same day as the store, we're going to be launching a website that's going to be able to ship worldwide.